Hello everyone, welcome to Make and Link. Today we are going to start fourth lecture of design of reinforced concrete structure, and this lecture will be on working stress method. In the first three lectures, I have explained you about the basic concept of structural designing and introduced you to the design philosophy. From this lecture onward, we will learn the design philosophy in detail and will solve some real design problem. Let's take a look what we are going to cover in this lecture. There are two parts, and the first part I will explain you about the working stress method in greater detail. Well, it means firstly we will study the basic assumption of working stress method. Secondly, the process of finding actual neutral axis and critical neutral axis. And thirdly, we will get into different types of beam sections according to steel and concrete. And lastly, we will study about the moment of resistance that beam section resists internally. In the second part of this lecture, there are two practical examples that will build your understanding about the practical application of what we have studied till now. So let's start with assumptions of working stress method. I have already introduced you in second lecture about working stress method. The main concept of this method is that structure members behave in linear elastic manner. For analysis and design purpose, we use allowable stress, also known as permissible stress, as a reference for material system. It is the stress which we get by dividing the ultimate or yield strength by factor of safety. Now let's take a look on assumptions of working stress method from IS456. The first assumption is that plane section normal to beam axis remains plane after bending. If we bend any beam sample, then cross section plane at any location should be normal to beam neutral axis. The second assumption is all the tensile stresses are resisted by the reinforcement and none by concrete, except in the uncracked phase where concrete alone resists the compressive as well as the tensile stresses. But here in working stress method, this is the cross section of beam. XA is the distance of neutral axis from upper fiber. Capital D is the overall depth of beam section. Small d is the effective depth which is the distance from centroid of steel to extreme upper fiber and B is the breadth of beam section. And this is the stress profile. Upper portion is in compression and blow is in tension. But second assumption says that tensile strength of concrete is not to be considered. So area of concrete in tension zone is neglected. All the tensile stresses are resisted by reinforcement. And third assumption is Stresses are linearly proportional to strain for both concrete and steel. For example, consider Fe500 steel, the yield strength is 500 Nm per mm square. To find out the allowable stress for steel, we divide it by factor of safety 1.78. Then allowable stress sigma ST will be 280 Nm per mm square. So graph value reduced up to the sigma ST. Here, stresses are directly proportional to strain according to third assumption. In similar way, if we consider the M30 grade of concrete, the characteristic strength will be 30 Newton per mm square. To get allowable or permissible stress for concrete, we divide it with factor of safety 3. Hence, graph reduces up to sigma CBC is equal to 10 Newton per mm square and it becomes linear. And fourth assumption is that the modular ratio, which is ratio of modulus of elasticity of steel to concrete, has the value m is equal to 280 upon 3 sigma CBC, where sigma CBC is permissible compressive stress of concrete in bending. Now the value of permissible stresses for concrete and steel according to IS456. Permissible stresses in concrete in tension. Factor of safety for concrete in tension is 8.5 to 9.5. This is the table from IS456. 
here all these are the grade of concrete and these all are the corresponding permissible stresses in tension in concrete permissible stresses in concrete in compression factor safety for concrete in bending compression is 3 and for direct compression is 4 here these are the grade of concrete and these all are the permissible stresses in compression in bending and these all are the permissible stresses in direct compression now permissible stresses in steel factor of safety for steel is 1.8 this is the table number 22 from is code here permissible stresses are defined as based on size of reinforcement so these all are the value of permissible stresses which are given in is code we will use them to solve the practical examples one more important point here is that all the value of permissible stresses given in table number 21 and 22 of is code increase up to limit of 33.33 percent increase in permissible stresses due to wind load earthquake load temperature load shrinkage effect etc so whenever you design in these mentioned conditions increase the stresses up to a limit of 33.33 percent now let us move to next section depth of neutral axis of beam section there are two types of depth of neutral axis one is actual depth xa and other one is critical depth we call it xc actual depth of neutral axis here to find out the actual depth of neutral axis we transform the reinforced steel area into equivalent concrete area using modular ratio we have already learned the concept of transform area method in third lecture in detail so let's assume the area of all steel bar is ast then equivalent transform area will be mast now if we look at stress profile the corresponding stress in transform section will be sigma st over m here we can calculate the neutral axis by equating the moment about neutral axis b into x a area into distance from centroid x a upon 2 is equal to m a s t the equivalent transform area into b minus x a b into x a square upon 2 is equal to m a s t into b minus x a Further, we can solve this equation to find the value of actual neutral axis. I will show you later with the help of example how to use this concept. One important point here is that all the actual depth of neutral axis depends on area of steel. Now the depth of critical neutral axis. This is the depth of neutral axis at which maximum permissible stresses in concrete and steel are obtained at the same time. If you look at stress profile, permissible bending stresses in concrete and permissible tensile stresses at steel reach at same time. So with the help of similar triangle, we can say that sigma CBC upon XC is equal to sigma ST upon M upon B minus XC. We can further resolve it as XC critical neutral axis is equal to B upon 1 plus sigma st upon m sigma cbc and we can also write it in another form xc is equal to k into d where k is the neutral axis coefficient and its value will be 1 upon 1 plus sigma st upon sigma cbc so we will use this formula to find out the critical neutral axis now let us move to some different types of section based on relative distance between actual neutral axis xa and critical neutral axis xc let us consider the depth of critical neutral axis is xc if critical depth and actual depth both are equal and actual compressive bending stress reach to level of permissible bending stress in concrete here sigma dash cbc is actual stresses in concrete in extreme compression fiber and at the same time actual stresses 
sigma dash st in steel also reaches to the level of permissible stresses. We call it balanced action. If depth of actual neutral axis is less than critical neutral axis, steel actual stresses reach to the level of permissible stresses, but in concrete, actual stresses sigma dash CBC are less than permissible stresses sigma CBC. And we call this section under reinforced section. If depth of axis XA is more than depth of critical neutral axis, in this case, concrete actual stresses reach to permissible stresses sigma CBC, but actual stresses in steel sigma dash ST are less than permissible stresses sigma ST, and we call this section over reinforced section. So let me summarize this concept. If concrete and steel actual stresses reach to level of permissible stresses at the same time, we call it balanced action. If concrete stresses don't reach to level of permissible stresses, we call it under reinforced action. And if steel stresses don't reach to level of permissible stresses, we call it over reinforced action. So now after understanding the different types of section, we move to another important concept that is moment of resistance. Moment of resistance is the maximum value of bending moment that any beam can resist safely. And we know very well that bending moment is a moment developed internally in a beam due to external loading. This is the cross section of singly reinforced beam and this is the stress profile. Let us assume that a neutral axis depth is Xc and it reaches to the level of permissible stresses. The tensile forces induced in steel will be T is equal to sigma ST into AST. This force will act at the centroid of a steel bar. On the upper side, compression force resisted by concrete and compression force C is equal to average permissible stresses into area of concrete which resists the compressive stresses b into x ray. Hence compressing force will be 1 upon 2 sigma cbc into area b x ray. This force acts as centroid of overall compression stresses area at a distance x ray upon 3 from extreme compression fiber. So the moment of resistance we can calculate it either from compression side or from tension side. From compression side it will be Compression force C into lever arm Z. Lever arm Z is the distance between tension and compression force and it will be D minus X A upon 3. So moment of resistance will be 1 upon 2 sigma CBC into B into X A into lever arm D minus X A upon 3. And moment of resistance from tension side it will be tension force T into lever arm Z. And it will be equal to sigma ST into AST into B minus X A upon 3. So now derive the formula of moment of resistance for the three types of beam section I have explained you earlier. The first case is under reinforced section. Here the actual depth X A is less than critical depth X C and corresponding stresses in steel is sigma ST upon M. Hence, the tensile force will be sigma st into ast. But in under reinforced section, the actual stresses sigma dash cbc are less than permissible stresses sigma cbc. Hence, the compressive force in this section will be 1 upon 2 sigma dash cbc into area bxc. Here, we will use sigma dash cbc instead of sigma cbc. So the moment of resistance from compression side will be compressive force into lever arm and here compressive force will be 1 by 2 sigma dash cbc into b into xa into d minus xa upon 3 and from tension side it will be tension force t into lever arm z and we know that tension force is sigma st into ast then d minus xa upon 3. One more thing here is that the failure of beam in this case will be take place due to failure of steel. And we know that in working stress method we consider steel as a ductile material and that's why 
we also call this failure as a ductile failure now move to the second case over reinforced section here actual depth of neutral axis xj is greater than critical depth of neutral axis xc but the problem is here that the actual stresses in steel does not reach to the level of permissible stresses in steel so the tensile force will be sigma dash st into ast so here we will use sigma dash ast instead of sigma st on the other hand the compression force will be same it will be 1 by 2 sigma cbc into area bxk so the moment of resistance first from compression side it will be compression force into lever arm 1 by 2 sigma cbc into area bxk d minus x upon 3 and from tension side it will be tension force into lever arm and here tension force will be sigma dash st into area of steel ast d minus x upon 3 so in this case we will use sigma dash st because steel does not reach to the level of permissible stresses one more thing is here that in this case the failure of beam takes place due to failure of concrete and we know very well that concrete is a brittle material and that's why this failure is also known as brittle failure now move to the last case for moment of resistance the balance section in this case the actual depth of neutral axis and critical depth of neutral axis are equal and that's why stresses in steel and concrete reach at the same time to the level of permissible stresses and the tensile force will be t is equal to sigma st into ast and compression force will be 1 by 2 sigma cbc into b into xc one important point here is that the lever arm is d minus xc upon 3 and here i can replace the value of xc with kd and i have already explained you the concept of xc is equal to kd so after taking d as a common it will be d into 1 minus k upon 3 and we represent it as a d into j where j is equal to 1 minus k upon 3 we call it lever arm coefficient so the moment of resistance from compression side will be compression force into lever arm and it will be 1 by 2 sigma cbc b into xc into d minus xc upon 3 and here we replace the xc with the value of kd it will be 1 by 2 sigma cbc into b into kd into d minus kd upon 3 here if we take d as a common then it will be d into 1 minus k upon 3 and further we can write it as a 1 by 2 sigma cbc b into kd into d into j and we can resolve it in another form 1 by 2 sigma cbc into k into j into bd square and finally i can write down moment of resistance as a q into bd square here q is the moment of resistance coefficient and its value will be equal to 1 by 2 sigma cbc into k into j and the moment of resistance from tension side will be tension force into lever arm and it will be equal to sigma st into area of steel ast d minus xc upon 3 here we have finished the first part of this lecture now move to second part where i will explain you two examples and these examples will build your understanding about the practical application of what we have studied till now. Towards the second part of this fourth lecture, just click on this link here. If you have any doubt about the concept discussed in this lecture, comment below and we will get back to you shortly. Thanks for watching.